قال الإمام البخاري رحمه الله تعالى محمد بن إسماعيل البخاري قال ما اقتبت أحدا منذ أن علمت أن الغيبة تضر أهلا He said that I never backbit anyone the moment that I found out that ghiba, backbiting, will hurt the people that engage in it. I never backbit anyone the moment that I learned that backbiting will harm the people that engage in it. The Prophet was traveling with Abu Bakr and some of his companions. And while he slept in another area, the companions stayed up and they engaged in frivolous kalam, frivolous speech. And when it was time for suhoor, they were fasting during Ramadan, it was time for suhoor, Abu Bakr who told the man, go ask the Prophet to come and to have his suhoor with us. So when the man went to the Prophet to inform him about suhoor, the Prophet said, go back and tell Abu Bakr that you guys already ate. Akeltum, you've already eaten. So when the man went back and told Abu Bakr this, Abu Bakr said, go back and tell him, we didn't eat anything yet. What is he talking about? We didn't eat anything. So when the man came back to the Prophet Wasallam, he said, you know, Abu Bakr said that we didn't eat anything yet. The Prophet Wasallam said that you stayed up last night and you backbit your brothers in Islam. He said, as a matter of fact, I can see the flesh of your brother between your teeth. You've already eaten. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the ayah, uh, uh, That would one of you like to eat the flesh of your brother, you would dislike it, you would abhor it. So then likewise, abhor backbiting. He said, I can see the flesh in between your teeth you've already eaten, meaning you've eaten the flesh of your brother. So the man asked the Prophet Sallallahu seek forgiveness for us, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu said, go to the individual that you backbit and ask for his forgiveness. And, you know, we take the matter of ghibah, backbiting, very lightly. And the Prophet Sallallahu he defined very clear, very clear, clearly for us, what backbiting is. He said to his companions, Do you know what backbiting is? He said, To mention about your brother what he would dislike you mentioning about him. To mention, put yourself in his shoes. If you was to dislike something like that being mentioned about you in your absence. All right, to mention something about your brother that you dislike. All right, and I'll finish the rest of the hadith at the end of this talk. So some people have a hard time controlling their tongue and they find themselves engaged in backbiting often. So I'll give you a remedy for curing backbiting because it is a disease and it destroys our communities. It destroys families. It destroys families. Number one is that when people share information with you, you are responsible for that information. And to go back and to convey that information, you have broken a trust. And it is a form of backbiting because you are mentioning something that your brother, information your brother gave to you that he would not like you sharing with anyone else. That is a form of backbiting. And Umar that if your brother narrates something to you personally and then walks away from the conversation, then it is an amana, it is a trust that is on you. Even if he doesn't say to you, don't tell anyone. I don't have to say to you, don't tell anyone. But the fact that I told you in private is an indication for you to understand that that is private information between me and you. And to go and share that is to do something or to say something about me that I would not like. All right? And you find this oftentimes, you know, go on between Muslims, you know, where we'll have private conversations with one another and then we'll go and we'll tell the rest of the dunya. And Allah, for Allah, we put it on the internet or we send it out on a mass text message to everyone else and it was a private conversation, subhanAllah. But a remedy for this is Abdullah ibn Wahab, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the scholars of the past, he said, نظرت أني كلما اقتبت 
إنسان أصوم يوم فأجهدني يعني تعبت منه فكنت أختاب يوما وأصوم يوما وأختاب يوما وأصوم يوما ثم نويت فكلما اختاب اختبت إنسانا تصدقت بدرهم فبحبي فبحبي الدر الدرهم الدراهم تركت الغيبة عبد الله بن وهب he said that I took an oath I took an oath that every time that I backbit someone I would fast a day I took an oath I'm trying to get myself to stop backbiting so I took an oath I said to myself every time I backbite someone I will fast a day the very next day he said and this wore me out it took a lot out of me because I used to backbite one day and then fast another day backbite one day and then fast another day and you know it was taking a toll on me he said so then I decided to get me to stop he said I took another oath that every time I backbit someone I would give a dirham I would give a dirham in sadaqa I would give my money away sadaqa every time I backbit someone he says so because of my love of money I ended up leaving off backbiting think about that every time you backbite somebody every time you mention someone's name in your conversation in a manner that they would not like take $20 out of your wallet and give it away sadaqa and I guarantee you in time you will either be broke and muffless. You will be broke and deprived of good deeds because when you backbite someone, you are giving them your good deeds. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, لو كنت مختاب أحد لاقتبت أبويا لأنهما أحق الناس في حسناتي. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that if I was going to backbite anyone, I would backbite my parents. I would backbite my parents. He said, because if there's anyone who is more deserving of my good deeds, it's them. Because <laughs> that's what you do when you backbite people. You are literally handing them your hasanat on a platter. Which is why Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he heard that someone was backbiting him, he had his wife prepare a plate of halawa, you know, sweets. And he went to the house of the individual who backbit him, and he knocked on the door. When the individual opened the door, Imam Malik gave him the halawa. The man said, well, you know, why are you giving me this? You know, I, I backbite you, I talk about you, why are you doing this? He said, this is the least that I can do for someone who has given me all of his hasanat. This is the least I can do. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. You know, because for some of us, others are the reason for us to go to paradise. Some of us would not have been able to get to paradise on our own. But it is through the help of other people that we get to paradise because they backbite us, they slander us, they take our money, they oppress us. And as a result of that, they are putting all of their hasanat, transferring all of their good deeds into our account. As the Prophet Sallallahu said in ending, he said, Atadruna man muflis. Do you know who the bankrupt person is? The person that is bankrupt. And the Sahaba, interpreting that from their own materialistic outlook, they said, the person who doesn't have any dinar or dirham, he has no currency, he has no money. All right, that's from a materialistic perspective. The Prophet said, no, al muflis, from a spiritual perspective, from a religious perspective. He said, al muflis, man yati yom al qiyama, wa kad salla wa sama, wa jahada, fi sabirila, wa kad shatama hada, wa darama hada, wa akhada mal hada. He said, no, the bankrupt person is the person who comes Yom Qiyamah, comes on the Day of Judgment, he fasted, he prayed, he fought jihad in the cause of Allah, he did all of these good deeds. But on, uh, on the flip side of those good deeds, he backbit this person, he spilled the blood of this person, he hit this person, he slandered this person, and all of those people he violated, he will have to recompense those people. He will have to compensate those people. So what is going to happen? The Prophet ﷺ said, So yukhad min hasanati. It will be taken from his good deeds and given to the people that he violated. Hatta ila faniyat hasanatuhu. And if he runs out of good deeds before he finishes compensating the, those people, then he will take from their evil deeds and they will put them in his account. 
and then you will be tossed into the hellfire. And the thing is, is that going back to the ending of the hadith, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the Sahaba asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fi akhihi ma'akul? What if what I'm saying about my brother is actually the truth? Because some of us, we believe that by speaking the truth, we are exonerated from sin. Right? We are, we are absolved of sin because we are telling the truth. Your, your mother ever say the statement to you that you are wrong even though you're right? <laughs> you're wrong even though you're right. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِن كَانَ فِي أَخِيكَ مَا تَقُولُ فَقَدْ اِخْتَبْتَهُ وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ مَا تَقُولُ فَقَدْ بَهَتَّهُ If what you are saying about your brother is actually the truth, then in fact you have that bit him. You're wrong even though you're right. Saying, you know, we say sometimes, well, it's the truth, <laughs> right? We, we laugh about it. You know, people say, oh, you shouldn't say that about him. And the person will say, well, it's the truth. And believe in their mind that because I'm saying the truth about this person, I'm free from any blame or free from any sin. No, you are actually sinning, even though you're telling the truth about him. The Prophet Wasallam he said, in canopy, akhika meta kul fakad ikhtabtahu. If what you are saying about your brother is the truth, then in fact you have backbit him. He said, Wa illam yakun fihi meta kul fakad bahattahu. And if what you are saying about him is not true, then you have slandered him. You have slandered him. So that is the difference between backbiting and slander. Slander is that you're saying something about him that is not true, alright? And backbiting is saying something about him that actually is true. So just because you say the truth about someone doesn't necessarily mean that you are exempt from backbiting. It is still considered backbiting. And, you know, we should be very cautious about this. Control your tongue. Control your tongue. Be careful that your tongue is connected directly to your scale of hasanat, your scale of good deeds. It's a direct connection. Just like your bank account is connected to your bank card, all right? So if you lose your card, someone else uses your card, takes all of your money. If you break your card, you got to go apply for another one. Just as your bank card is connected to your bank account, your tongue is connected to your account of good deeds. So if you are in the habit of letting your tongue just do what it wants to do, then you will come on the day of judgment broke and definitely upset because you will have given everyone that you talked about your good deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu wa ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira wa akhir da'wana. Adil hamdulillah wa bil alamin wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.